Hello, uh, my name is Jim Ward, and I am a certified SOLIDWORKS PDM Technical Support Specialist with Go Engineer. In this video, I will be discussing how to set up PDM to enable the one submitting the file for approval to select which groups need to approve the file. This is useful when it is desired that the one submitting the file has control over which groups need to approve it. Now this method does work best with PDM Professional, and that's because PDM Professional has automatic transitions, which PDM Standard does not. PDM Professional does have parallel transitions, so why not use parallel transitions for this? Parallel transitions work well when all groups specified in the transition need to approve all files. But when you have different groups that you want to approve different files, then parallel transition does not have that uh, flexibility. Also, the parallel transitions provide a single approval time, and that's the time when the last person approved it. If you want to capture when each person approved the file, then you would need to use it, this, this particular method. So this method can capture when each group approved it, and also, uh, with this method, the groups that need to approve are selected among the possible groups at the time the file is submitted for approval. Uh, this does provide maximum flexibility on approvals. The overall method that we will use is that we will use checkboxes in the data card to set which groups need to approve. And then in the workflow, we will use automatic transitions and transition conditions to route the files until all signatures are captured and then we will release the file. Now before we modify the workflow, there are some preparations we need to make. So first of all, we need to create three unique variables for each group. One for the checkbox, another for the signature, and a third variable for the signature date. And then we need to add checkboxes for each group on the file data cards. We need to add places to display the signatures and dates on the file cards. And then we need to modify the workflow. Let's start by looking at the variables in the PDM admin tool. Here we are in the PDM administration tool. And as I said, we will start by looking at the variables that I created to um, hold the information and control the flow of the file. So to begin with, let's look at the variables that I created for the checkboxes. And that's these three here. It says required doc control, required management, and required manufacturing. If you look at each of these, you'll see it's really just the variable name, and I'm not doing anything with um, attributes because I don't feel that this is necessary to keep this information within the file. So basically, I just created the variable and gave it a name, and I did it for all three. Notice I put required at the beginning of each of these, and that's because I want to keep the variables together um, here in the um, in the variable list. Now to um, to capture the the date. For each of them, I put these here. Notice it says date and then dot control approved, date management approved, and date manufacturing approved. Now, in this case, I thought it might be useful to keep that information within the file properties. And so I went ahead and I gave them a, an attribute. And so, and at the moment, uh, this is only for assemblies and parts. But uh, in your case, you're going to want to also add this for drawings and anything else that's going through the workflow. So again, the attribute is here, and there is the variable name, date the dot control approved, and I tell it OK. And the same is true for management and manufacturing. And then the last three are the actual approvals. And that would be approval dot control management and manufacturing. And again, I decided it would, might be useful to keep these within um, the file properties, and so I assign an attribute for these three variables. Now that the variables are created, we need to um, add them to the file data card. Now, part of the reason that I only gave uh, this to my parts and assemblies is because my data cards are separated so that uh, I have one card for models, assemblies, and parts. I have another one for drawings. And for the purposes of this demonstra demonstration, um, I only did this for my parts. In your case, of course, uh, you're going to want to do this for, um, for all SOLIDWORKS files and any other files that go through um, or that you want to use this particular um, approval with. So let's see. Uh, let's go to 
the file data card. And you see I have a, um, a tab here just for approvals. So I added all nine of these down below. So if you notice, uh, this is a checkbox. And to add that checkbox, that's this one right here. That's checkbox, create a checkbox control. And so when you click on that, then um, you put it where you want it. And then over here, you give it a caption, well, a, a label. And then uh, checkboxes, when they are checked, they have a value of one. When they're unchecked, they have a value of zero. And then I provided these other, these are just simple text boxes. And I assigned them to the variable because these are only to capture the text value. In this case, this is the, the initials or the signature that you're going to um, uh, capture. And then this last is the date that it was approved. Now, in my case, since this is all uh, controlled um, uh, within the workflow, I made these, whoops, I'd like for them all to be read only. Same street with the dates, all read only. Now, since these checkboxes have to be changed at the time that they're submitted for approval, they cannot be read only, uh, but they do need to um, update all configurations. Now, I gave them a default value of checked because um, that's an actual number. One, if they're unchecked, it's, it should be zero. Um, in checking for zero, on, I did have some problems. So I, instead of checking for zero, I will check for not equal to one. And uh, we'll go into that further when uh, we start looking at the workflow. So once we've done this, now the, the data card um, is, is ready. It's done, I have saved it. Now let's go look at the workflow. So what I have done in my workflow is I have added a new state. I just call it temp for approvals. Then I have automatic transitions out of that state. Once all approvals are met, it comes down here into released. While it's still obtaining approvals, it's routed back through backup to pending approval. Now in the approvals and the approves, I do have to have uh, one approval for each group. And, and on the return, I need to have one return for each group. However, once everything is done, we can set up the conditions as such that when all conditions are met, I only need to have one down here. And I'll go further into conditions here in a moment. So let's uh, go with the file. It's sitting here in WIP and then somebody submits it for approval. Now, since uh, these are checkboxes, there's nothing in the data card to specify that at least one of those has to be checked. And so it would be possible for somebody to not check anything, submit it for approval, and have it just go through all the way down here to released. So to stop that, I have a check here on the submit for review on the conditions. I have an OR condition. Now, the way this works is on the OR, any one of these conditions will set this to true and then it will go through. And so what I have checked here is that I need to have at least one of these equal to one. So in other words, at least one of these checkboxes has to be checked in order for somebody to change it from WIP to pending approval. So at least one checkbox has to be checked. Now, once that has, has been done, then I look for the approvals. So on the conditions for the approval, I check that the checkbox is checked. In this case, this is for manufacturing. Then I also check that manufacturing, the text has to be equal to blank. The reason I do this is so that uh, somebody do, cannot just keep um, approving it, say for manufacturing, there's no reason to. And so, once it has been approved, then it can no longer go through this approval loop here. Now, in the actions, 
then I this is when when somebody approves it. This when I this is when I capture who approved it and when they approved it. So I set the variable um, approval for manufacturing and I capture their initials in this case. And then for the variable for approval date, again, I, the variable is just the date manufacturing approved, and then that's just the date. And I do that for each of the groups. And that, notice they all say approve, and then when you right click to approve something, that's the only thing that anybody sees is approved. They only see a single approve, regardless of which group there is. Now, which routes these take depends upon the person. So you will want these um, the groups to be um, mutually exclusive. Because to be honest, I did not check to see what happens if a person is in multiple groups of these approval groups. I think it just goes through one of them. Now, what happens when it comes down here is it checks uh, these return conditions. So if in this case, this is for dot control. That's why you have to want to have to have one of these for each group, because this is an and. So if, if text is equal to blank, in other words, if no one has approved it yet, and the required dot control, in other words, if the checkbox is checked, if that's equal to one, then it will return. And it will come back here for dot control. And so it, this one checks for dot control. This one checks for manufacturing. This one checks for management. And so if one person approves it, it comes through here and it still needs more signatures then one of these three will return it back to pending approval for the next person to approve. Now, what, the way it checks for it to see if all approvals have been met is it looks in these ORs. Now, the way this works is this OR, since these are in different ORs, and this is at the end, what happens is this OR has to return true, and this OR has to return true, and this OR has to return true. So let's look at each of these ORs. So each one checks, in this case, this is for dot control. So the OR here, so if either one of these is true, then the OR is true. So if approval dot control, is not equal to blank. In other words, if there is a signature, then it's true. And then required dot control number not equal to one. What that means then is if the checkbox is not checked, then this will be true. So what this is checking for is either it has a signature or the checkbox is not checked. So that's the logic behind it. If either one of those is true, then the or is true and then it goes to look at the next one. So what happens is, let's say um, dot control is checked and management is checked. Then what happens is it will um, not allow it to go through until there is a signature for dot control and for management. Now, since manufacturing is not checked, then the text down here required manufacturing will not be equal to one because it should be zero, and then that's true also, and then finally it is approved. And of course, when it is approved, that's when it sets the um, revision variable and it increments the revision. And that's really the secret. And then when uh, files are returned back to work in progress, perhaps for a new release, then you want to go through on actions and set all the variables um, the revision, uh, the doc control approval, management approval, the, um, the dates, you want to clear all those out when it goes back to WIP. And so we do that automatically. And same is true if a file is in pending approval and somebody rejects it, we again want to clear out all of the approvals. And so we do that here. We clear the doc control as well as the, the doc control dates. And to clear them out, all you do is you set the variable, clear dot control variable, set variable the app dot control, and we leave this value blank. I also need to cover the permissions on the transitions. So a file is sitting here on pending approval. And then for each of these approvals, the permissions 
in this case, this is for manufacturing. See, manufacturing approval. So you want to manuf allow manufacturing to permit here, and that's it. Now, system administrator, he has full, he's a special user, he has full rights everywhere. So again, I permit um, manufacturing on this one because this is manufacturing approval. And then for each of these others, so this is dot control approval, so I permit here. And then finally over here, this is management approval. And so they have the permissions here. Now these three are the only place where you actually specify only a particular group. The rest of these, I allow all users as well as system administrator because no one is actually selecting these. And I wanna make sure that when say dot control approves, but it still needs say manufacturing approval, that it comes back through here and that it's not being prevented because whoever approved it doesn't happen to have the permissions on this particular um, transition. And the same is true down here when all approvals have been met. I'm not gating this by who has permissions to do this because it's an automatic permission. I want this to automatically flow through once all of the approvals uh, have been met. So I control this by the conditions, not by who has the permissions. This has been Jim Ward from Go Engineer describing how to implement arbitrary selection of approval groups at the time a file is submitted for approval. Thank you for watching.